So today I thought we'd have a look at the Marantz PMD602A mic preamp. It's a little two-channel mic preamp that you use with your camera. And it's for those situations where perhaps you might want to use a microphone that requires phantom power, but you don't want to go to the trouble of doing dual system audio and syncing everything up in post and all that malarkey. Now these are fairly inexpensive, they run about 99 US dollars, or you could pick one up here in Australia from B&H in the US for about 150 Australian dollars shipped, which is pretty reasonable. But is it worth it, I guess is the question. So I thought we'd check it out, uh, make some measurements, particularly measure the output level, which has been completely left off the spec sheet for some unknown reason, and just uh, see whether it's suitable for purpose. Uh, of course we're using it right now. Let's check it out. So just looking at the overall construction of the unit, it's it's reasonable, it's kind of cheap and cheerful. Uh, there's a bit of heft to it. The uh, case is powder coated metal, um, although the uh, the panels are plastic. Um, it's a little bit bulky, I'd say, a little bit chunky. It's okay under the camera, but I wouldn't want to mount this on top of my camera. I think that would be a little bit too large. Overall, the feel of it's quite nice. Um, you know, the pots feel quite reasonable. The little slide switches feel Mm, exactly like you'd expect little slide switches to feel, which is to say, not great. Uh, all in all though, quite nice. There's a few little quirks. Um, one of the strange choices they made was these little LEDs uh, for the limiters. You'd think, oh, that indicates that the limiter is active. And they'd, you know, flash on and off. No, that's merely a reminder that you've switched the limiter on. So just power it up there, and at the moment you Turn the limiter on, on comes an LED, reminding you that you've turned the limiter on. Thanks for that. Now, that'd be okay for, a, say, a, uh, a phantom power warning. That'd be handy, but uh, no such thing, I'm afraid. Nonetheless, uh, it's reasonably fully featured. We've got the option of 12 as well as 48 volt phantom power. Uh, we've got a mono stereo switch, which is quite handy if you're just doing mono with a single mic and you don't want to worry about duplicating channels in post, uh, that works quite nicely. So just looking at the side of the unit, we have uh, two combination XLR and quarter inch tip ring sleeves. We have a single output to uh, go to your camera there, which the manual tells you to connect to the microphone input of your camera, uh, more on that later, and the monitor input, which you uh, connect to the headphone output of your camera which enables you to use the headphone amplifier of the unit for a monitoring loop, which is quite neat for playback and whatnot. So just looking at the side panel here, one of the curious choices they made here was in the, uh, the choice of just using four AA cells as a power source. Uh, so you don't get the option of running off of USB or maybe a Sony MPF batteries or any other option like that. Now they claim a battery life of 12 hours with phantom power on or 14 hours without. I'm not sure I believe that, but if it runs for a day's shooting on one set of nickel metal hydrides, I'd be happy with that. Now I'll just kind of open up that battery compartment. So a bit of a curious design choice here in that uh, they've gone with a very 1970s style battery compartment with uh, two cells deep and uh, making use of the uh, ribbons uh, to uh, get the uh, cells at the back out. And if you uh, fail to uh, throw the ribbon in behind the uh, rearmost cell, then you're in a whole world of pain trying to get that battery out again. The other thing that's really odd about this is the whole battery compartment rattles from side to side in a most unsatisfying fashion. That's probably about the worst bit of build quality on the whole unit. But apart from that, it's quite pleasing really. So in order to measure the nominal output level, I've connected the signal generator to the line input on the left channel. Uh, we're feeding that a one kilohertz sine wave at one volt RMS. And I'm just gonna uh, adjust the gain until our meters show a nominal zero. Sort of got to pick your halfway point as you do with LED meters with limited resolution. And let's have a look at that on the voltmeter. And there we have it. Uh, nearest dammit is to swearing to one volt. Now we can even get that 
to do, read directly in DBV. So zero DBV is an unusually high level to see for something that's intended to be connected to a microphone level input. That really is line level. Indeed, that's really pro line level. Uh, that's even um, a bit too hot for a consumer line level input. So really unusual to see that. Next thing I like to do is to check the amount of headroom we've got. So I'll fire up the scope and we'll see how far we can push the output before it starts to clip. And then we'll see uh, how much level that is on the meter. Okay, so that's our one volt RMS. Let's crank the gain as far as it goes. And that's fine. It's still clean though. I'll just, well, it's obviously too much. I'll back it off a little bit. And what have we got? That's good. That's not. Well, that's pretty much it actually. Okay, that looks reasonable. Let's have a look at that on the meter just to uh, be sure but it looks like about 6 volts RMS. Uh, there as we see it it's about 5.9 volts RMS and we'll get that to compute that for us and there we go so plus 15 and a bit dB so we've got a good 15 dB of headroom uh, it's quite an impressive performance really it just seems completely inappropriate for something which is meant to be driving at the microphone level. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to test the output impedance. So I'm going to pick out a resistor to uh, load up the output with and we'll see how much the level drops by and from that we'll be able to compute the output impedance of the device. So I've readjusted the levels to be as near as I can get to 0 dBV and I've picked out a resistor of 100 ohms as I believe that that's going to be pretty close to the output impedance. And the rule of thumb here is that uh, if the uh, load resistor is equal to the output impedance of the device, then you should see a drop of about 60, of exactly 60 dB in the output. Uh, that's a halving of the output. So let's just jam a 100 ohm resistor across that output and see what happens. Okay. So we're seeing around about a 7 dB drop there. And through the magic of post-production, I'll figure out exactly what that is. So that's the Marantz PMD602A in a nutshell. All in all, I was pretty happy with it. I think that the line level output is going to be a problem for many users. Personally, with my Panasonic GH3, I needed about 35 dB of attenuation to be able to safely drive the camera from the output of the preamp. So you can either make your own resistive divider or you can purchase an attenuating cable from companies like Sescom, who make some quite nice products, particularly for this purpose. I will say though that they're not cheap, so in the context of a cheap preamp, maybe that's not the way to go. Apart from that, not nothing really to complain about. The headphone output, to be honest, was noisy. Not so noisy as to be useless, just noisy enough to be annoying. But you know, all in all, I'd say it's cheap and cheerful, and I rather like it.